Hi guys, it's John again from Android Addicts, and today we're going to be doing another benchmark test between the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra. So we have the Exynos 2200, we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Now they've all finally got their February update. The Snapdragon is also on Android One UI 5.1 finally, so we can just run through the tests as normal and see how they do. So we're going to run through the Geekbench test here. This is Geekbench 6, don't forget. We're then going to move on to the Antutu benchmark, followed by a stress test and then the standard 3 Mark Extreme tests for both the Wildlife and Slingshot. I'll put the firmware details down below in the description if you want to compare to your model. You'll also notice that we've got the temperature widget in the top right, and they all started at 100% battery, so it'll be interesting to see how they last. But anyway, let's get on with the test and see how they do. Right, so some great results there from the S23 Ultra, not dipping anywhere near below 2000 for the single core, sticking around well over 5200, 5300 for the mod core, Interestingly, the temperatures here, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is at 29 alongside the 8 Gen 2, but the Exynos 2200 is currently at 32, so it seems to be a bit warmer than the 8 Gen 1, which is quite unusual. Now, the multi score still beating the 8 Gen 1, single core still not beating the 8 Gen 1, but we'll move over to the compute test now and see how they fare in that. Okay, so the compute scores are in, and as always, the HM1 comes in last place with rather mediocre 4,000 odd. Exynos 3200 still doing really well here, even compared with the 8 Gen 2. So I'll put the averages on the screen as always so you can compare. Let's move on now to the Antutu benchmark test and see how they do. Just before we start, we can see here the temperatures 33, 31, and 28. So still much cooler is the 8 Gen 2. And I don't know what's happened with the latest update, but it's obviously done wonders for the 8 Gen 1 because it is running a couple of degrees cooler than the Exynos 2200. Battery wise, 95% versus 92 versus 91. So we'll just run through the benchmark now and see how they compare to last month. Right, so there we are, some impressive results here from the S22. So we've got 900,000 points for the 2200, got 921,000 for the S22 8 Gen 1. We've got 1.25 million for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So it's very interesting comparing these ones here. So you can see here CPU scored better on the Exynos compared to the 8 Gen 1. GPU, not too far behind, but the 8 Gen 1 wins easily. Memory and user experience, pretty much the same, although the 8 Gen 1 does win by over 10,000 points. I've got a loss of 2% battery as well on the two S22s, and a loss of 4% on the S23. So it's performing better, but it is up using up more battery in doing so. Temperature-wise though, you can see here the maximum it got to is 32.4, compared to 34 and 35. On the S22s. So still keeping cooler but using more battery here. We're down to 91, 87 and 86. So we'll move on to the stress test now and we'll run this for half an hour and just see how they do in a half hour test and we can compare to what we see here. If you want to pause, compare it to this month's update for February. Okay so I'll skip to the end of this as it's rather boring and we'll see how they uh, look afterwards. Okay, so the stress test just finished and I'm really quite surprised here by the results. So first of all, let's just go over the S23 because obviously this is unbeatable. It's extremely good performance. We can see here the CPU performance at around 85 to 90% for pretty much all of the test. So that's really good. There's a few bits here in the middle of the test where it was around 80%, but even still, when you look at how locked the cores are here at their respective speeds, you can see that this is the almost perfect result. Now, comparing this to the S22s, obviously slightly worse off, but what's surprising me this month is how much better the S22 than this Exynos 2200 is. We can see here the speeds are actually some of the highest I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen the speed of the Exynos 2200 get this high. This is around 2.3 to 2.4, which is basically just a tiny bit less, I'd say, than the 8 Gen 1 here, which is running at about 2.5, 2.6. But there's a lot more dips down here, down below 2.0 gigahertz compared to the Exynos. You can see here the pink line is a lot higher or stays on average a lot higher. I'd say around 2.3 
gigahertz. Compared to this of the 8 Gen 1, maybe it's not as good. I'll let you decide that. But when you look at the performance here, see here the 8 Gen 1 is really struggling to get above 80% performance. You can see here towards the end, it's actually below 60%. Now compare that to the 2200 and here I like I said I haven't really ever seen the Exynos perform this well and it's well over 80% for most of the test here performance wise it's around 84-85% the peaks here so yeah really impressive results there you can see that the temperature it did get a bit warmer than the Snapdragon again so maybe they are really pushing the performance of the S22 with the Exynos 2200 for the sort of last bit of its life before people start upgrading but the 8 Gen 1 again not as good as I've seen in the past, I don't think. Not very good performance result here in comparison. See also the battery life. So we've got 75, 71 and 68. And now we're going to move on to the 3D Mark tests. So we'll start off with the Wildlife Extreme. Okay, so the Wildlife Extreme test has just finished, and we can see here the S23 here winning massively, even on its lowest loop score of 2807. That's still better than the best loop on the S22 Ultra. Stability wise, 83 versus 66 and 74. So even though this is faster, it's still more stable than the 8 Gen 1. This is a bit more stable because it is running slower, and the temperatures 41, 41, and 44. So it's interesting how the 8 Gen 2 does get warmer in this test. Okay, so let's move on to the slingshot test and we'll see how they fare there. Okay, so the slingshot is finished. We can see here, similar to last month, 106.9 frames per second graphics test one for the S23 Ultra, followed by 62 graphics test two. Compare that with the S22 and we're getting around 66 on both the Exos and 8 Gen 1. 30 on the 2200 and 39 on the 8 Gen 1. Physics scores very very similar here between the Exynos and the 8 Gen 1 but way ahead is obviously the 8 Gen 2. Okay so just for a bit of fun I've included GPU score here from Basemark and this is a good test of the ray tracing capabilities of the CPUs so we're sticking in the same order here we've got Exynos 2200 we've got Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and then the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and you can see here the Exynos 2200 is actually beating the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 quite easily in this test. It was notably smoother as well. I didn't actually record this because I almost forgot to include this, but I'm just putting it in here anyway. But interestingly, the 8 Gen 1 does not support this test at all, so I couldn't uh, compare that one sadly. But uh, yeah, it is interesting just to include this so you can see how the Exynos 2200, which was sort of designed in, with ray tracing in mind, performs against the 8 Gen 2 here. Okay, so that is the end of the test, and we can see here they've finished on around 40 degrees. We've got 42, 41, and 40, and battery-wise we're at 60, 56, and 53%. So it does definitely seem to be that there is an improvement here on the 8 Gen 1's battery compared to last month. So that 5.1 update and the February update on top does seem to have helped out. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video.